get in Liberia with the everything's overloaded there. Now, what gets me is the self the the, the selfishness of saying I'm going to put me first. So he exposed all these people on the plane. He put everybody that he stayed with in risk. Everybody, everywhere he went, he put other people at risk. He knew that. He knew that he's got it, was willing to put them at risk. And then knowing that the U.S. citizenry were going to have to be on the hook to take care of him. But it's, it's, it, but it's worse than that. If he actually knew he was sick and he suspected it was Ebola, why did he allow himself to be discharged from the hospital the first time to go get even sicker and vomit over people? We that don't know I don't that know. story yet. Pardon? Uh, we don't know why yet. I think they, they turned him away. I think they, they, yeah. they didn't know that how sick he was. And then when he came back, they went, oh, crap. Now, you know, so how many people we're, he- we're hearing? Up to 100 people have now been exposed. I bet you it's a lot more it's than that. has got to be because every surface he touched, there's a potential for, a potential for, for transmission s- if he left any material behind. Yeah, for Sweat several or hours. Drool yeah. Or vomit or anything. So, um, well, I can see why he came here. I mean, based on your description about the selfishness, we have a role model for him. He's called Barack Obama. We'll be right back. We are struggling. Rising health care costs are part of the problem. Senator Jean Shaheen helped create this mess we're in. As a state senator, her bill chased 21 insurers out of our state. It reduced our choices, raised prices for New Hampshire families, and when Jean Shaheen supported Obamacare, it limited access to 10 of our 26 hospitals, reducing our choices again. Tell Jean Shaheen she's made health care worse. Hi, this is Rich Gerard, host of Gerard at Large in the Morning. The Manchester area's only locally owned, locally operated, focused and interested, riveting radio show heard live every Monday through Friday from 6 to 9 on 90.7 FM WLMW, New Hampshire Family Radio, and available 24-7 live or archived at GerardAtLarge.com. Be sure to tune in. All right, and uh, so Ann Custer, what do you, what's your opinion on this whole Ebola situation? That sounds about right. <laughs> Liberia. Li- Liberia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Libya. 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 <laughs> the, the Ebola patients from Libya. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. All righty. Anyway, welcome back to Grok Talk. I'm Steve McDonald here with Skip Murphy, Mike Rogers, Susan Olson, Kevin Kervix joined us. He's going to be our guest for a while. And, uh, hey, there you go. All this, uh, everybody's handing off things. Oh. <laughs> Hang on. Ebola, Ebola. I was kind of oh. do that, but I didn't have time to find the music. So, we are back. We were talking about West Africans sneaking into the country. We've already covered Scotland, um, Haggis. Ann Custer, um, Brian Demjanovic, uh, and and uh, and and well, Ann Horn, Ann Horn. <laughs> Jen Horn's pool guy is going to be with us uh, in segment four. Oh, wonderful! Um, so we're going to talk about you know that sort of thing. The Making a splash. Thing. Making a splash with uh, Brian, the pool guy. Crashing a splash. And uh, who knows? We're going to well, we still got a couple minutes left in this segment. <sighs> We could go anywhere. Well, let me uh, let me say that I think <clears throat> Barack Obama has all but without the words invited all these folks to come in. I mean, he's left the southern border open. He now made a speech that's saying we don't have to stop jet flights between the countries. We don't have to do anything that you know to secure our borders. We have such a magnificent. A hospital and health care system in this country. And you might Not kill a few a million problem. people and, and prevent an election. What the heck? Yeah, Come and on, in two man. weeks, that campaign promise has expired, and we've got probably now hundreds of people exposed to Ebola with a 70% death rate if you get it. I've, and uh, he's just... Playing golf. I, I've come, you know, you remember the Borg, right, from Star Trek? And, of course, I've called them the Borg for a long time, number, number of years, because that's what they are. So I've given, um, I've given Mr. Mr. Uh, security briefings his Borg designation 4 of 10, because that's what he is. <laughs> so. I have a solution, though. Oh, you do? Cool. Yeah. Someone came into my store last night, and uh, we are talking about the uh, armed guards around this gentleman's house in... Uh, Texas, right? Mm-hmm. Because the family apparently was leaving, and now they have to keep the family from leaving their own house. So, 
His idea was, and I don't support this, but of course this is an interesting idea, that if Ebola were to make it to Washington, D.C., that perhaps uh, we could localize it there and isolate it there, and then all the Second Amendment folks could kind of cordon off Washington, come around the perimeter, maybe around the beltway. <laughs> Somebody, of course, uh, I don't subscribe to that idea, but I thought it was a creative uh, suggestion. Some people did suggest that <laughs> all Ebola patients should be sent to D.C. for treatment. That's what they suggested. Well, Clear I, that I, place I, out I thought quick. they had one there already. Didn't they have a suspected case in yeah. D.C. Well, only yeah, yesterday? No, and, yeah. uh, if you read Ace of Spades, they have a guy there who's a, a doctor. And he writes about this a lot, and he talks about it, you know, clinically speaking. And um, he, he says, you know, you're going to get all these false cases. Because anybody who gets flu symptoms and, and thinks maybe I just traveled, right. I was in a plane, maybe I was in, in Dallas, you know, they're going to go to the hospital, and the news has nothing else to talk about, so they're going to scare the crap out of people with Ebola. And, uh, you know, it, it pays to be cautious. And if you were near anybody who was in contact, yeah, you should pay attention. But... You know, you're going to see in Atlanta and in, in Utah and Cal. You know, all these places are going to say hey, Ebola, <laughs> Ebola, and um, and he says, you know, he says you just got to be careful not to let that propel you down this thing where you know, like after 9/11, people were duct taping their houses up with plastic and to keep the uh, keep the white powder out. So uh, there will be instances of that, I'm sure. Because America is full of all kinds of people, right. and a lot of them are low-information voters, and not a lot to be done for it. So uh, yeah. Skip's going to get another mic out, I think. Yeah. Yeah. we, we got full house, and uh, we can't do without uh, Susan joining in because yes. uh, she's got lots to say to us. <laughs> and I was early anyway, so. He broke something. <laughs> the door was unlocked. I just wanted in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you and wanted in. It was great. Yeah. Oh, so, so all right. So it's an inter- it's interesting times. Interesting times. In, in, in. Indeed, interesting times. And we're out there without a strategy uh, for ISIS, of course. Um, we're arming some people in Syria, but we're not exactly sure who, and they'll turn out to be ISIS sooner or later. Uh, at, at this point, uh, I don't see what we've gained by deposing uh, Saddam Hussein or attempting to depose. Bashar, Bashar Assad, or deposing Muammar Gaddafi. They were all horrible people, uh, but the number of people in jail as political prisoners doesn't uh, come close to the number of people actually dead as a result of the strife that has been un- unleashed by the actions of our president. No, it's the dictator, you know. The actions or inactions? Inactions? Oh, you have your headset on. Okay. Actions or inactions? Yeah. Well, you know. Or is it one just... and the same? Um, I, th- I think they're closely related. I mean, he stirs up strife and then does nothing. Community organizer, that's what they do. Rub the citizenry raw and stand back and let them go at it. And, and, and don't forget the limbo doctrine, which is at play here, which is that uh, Obama is the proximate cause for this, but he makes sure his own fingerprints aren't on it. I'm sorry. I can't, I can't agree with that anymore because... We've all known exactly what he's been doing. It's the media, the mainstream media, that's been covering for him. I think that's what and he's doing. And even but, but, now but, but, they're but, giving but, up. But, but, that, but, that's my, but that's exactly my point, yeah. that Obama initiates all of this, and then he rails against it right. as, as though he's going to be the one that's going to save you from it. I think that's why yeah. he didn't take the intelligence briefings. Yeah, just, and he can say, I didn't know. I, I don't take the briefings. Just, it must be those guys yeah, doing just, it. Right? Just, yeah. just, just like... Pick a phone line. Just, just like in places like Venezuela, the populist says what he's going to do for uh, for the people and how he's going to protect them from all of this evil, uh, regardless of the fact that his policies have mostly caused it. Yeah. Exactly. What? No, no toilet paper on the shelves? I'm going to punish the evil profiteers. Never mind that my price control caused the problem. It's Are you talking stick. about Venezuela again? Yeah, why not? <laughs> well, see, they've got it right, too. See, now that, now that they're in trouble, they're blaming us. That's what you do. That's what any good communist, socialist, something They've or They've been blaming do. us from the beginning. Yeah, let's test Susan's microphone. Go I ahead. feel bad I took Susan's microphone. There, no, there are instructions. No, that's, hang on a second. I put you on this microphone. Try it again. I have instructions here. I still got nothing. This okay. is a test. Nothing? Nothing. 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 Drat. Drat. Get, get a little closer, Susan. These th- Hello? Doesn't work. All right, so we don't have Susan. Anyway. All right, turn me off, too. I'm going to try something else. All righty. 
Keep screwing around. Have yeah. some fun. So uh, this, this is technical innovation yes. on the fly. We've just become a tech program. Anybody could get unplugged at any moment for any reason, uh, and, and so we'll just all keep talking in the hope. That's right. That's... My name is Matt Mowers. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that any two of us could get through at any time. Thank you yes. very much, Matt, because I can use that forever. <laughs> uh, yes, the uh, the gift that keeps on giving. Which one is she on now? Hello. Yeah, she works there. That worked. I heard that. Right, that was her. So did I. Skip's trying to figure out what. Anyway, welcome to Soundboard with Skip Murphy. <laughs> can you hear me? Uh, I can hear you from there, but not from here. That's too bad. Yeah, isn't it? Okay, so... I, I got a nice echoey sound because I'm picking myself up from this microphone now, which I have to turn down. Okay. So, um, uh, we uh, got about a minute before we start heading into the next segment. Um, uh, we're, uh, yeah, we're uh, having, having fun here trying to squeeze more people into the room. That's right. And so uh, we're just going to uh, please visit graniterock.com, click the donate button, and we will buy a headset. We need a bigger board again. And, and, and a bigger board. So. And, and and by the way, you too can participate because the phone lines are still alive. Uh, now one of them is. Skip unplugged the other one. Yeah. You could call us at 603-715-9689. You can put it back on there. Yeah. 603. Well, I want to thank Annie for letting me have her seat. <laughs> yeah, Annie. Right. It was, it was, I appreciate that. Uh, she won't be using it anytime soon. No, she won't. This is her first public appearance, I think. It in, in is. Two years. It, yeah. it could have been. Should have <laughs> been. Could have been. You're, Might have been. You're the stand in for Annie Custer? I cannot tap dance. I did as a child, but uh, no longer. I so, can, I can, I can, I can her, shuffle. Can you prevaricate? That's the shall man. we? Uh, sh- shall we start a campaign We're to listening. put three empty chairs on lawns uh, around the state? There you go. Like that. That's a good plan. Speaking I like that. Try this again. <laughs> All right. Is she up dancing? Well, I don't know. We're going into the break, so uh, you can watch Annie dance on the live stream. Uh, we'll be back next segment with this whole room full of people. Excellent. And we're going to talk about some customer. stuff. I don't know what, but we're going to talk about some stuff because that's what we do. It's called Grok Talk. So we talk. We and, talk. Uh, I know. <laughs> and Kevin, <laughs> Kevin's here with a sheaf of notes. So he is, and we're going to find out what his notes are. I know we uh, we, we kind of almost sort of thought about what we were going to talk about. But we're going to let him take over, and the, we'll go wherever he wants to go. So I'm um, Steve McDonald here with Skip Murphy, Mike Rogers, Susan. Olson and Kevin Kervick, and we'll be right back in a couple of minutes. When asked whether she still supports Obamacare, Senator Jean Shaheen said, Yes, I do continue to support the law. We're beginning to see some positive results. How can Senator Shaheen say we're seeing positive results when 22,000 of our neighbors have already lost their health insurance? What's worse, the Boston Globe reports the state's only health insurance provider radically reduced the number of hospitals in their network, forcing some people to drive over an hour for lab work, even when there's a hospital within a few miles of their home. When pressed about lack of access, Shaheen said, There are some hospitals that are not covered, unfortunately, and um, I, I certainly hope that's going to change. Jean Shaheen promised us we could keep our doctors and our health care coverage. Now she hopes we can get to a local hospital? Call Senator Shaheen at 603-647-7500. Tell her we need more than hope. We need leadership. Paid for by Citizens for a Strong New Hampshire. Hi, this is Rich Gerard, host of Gerard at Large in the Morning, the Manchester area's only locally owned, locally operated, focused, and interested, riveting radio show heard live every Monday through Friday from 6 to 9 on 90.7 FM WLMW, New Hampshire Family Radio, and available 24-7 live or archived at GerardAtLarge.com. Be sure to tune in. This is the Coalition of New Hampshire Taxpayers. We're located at 8 North Main in Concord, New Hampshire. This is a repository for all things conservative and municipal. So if you have a problem in your town, your school, your budget committee, the right to know law, and now at the top of our list is voter fraud. you have a tip for us, some information for us, you want to join or help us out, cnht.org.
Hi, this is Rich Gerard, host of Gerard at Large in the Morning. You're listening to Grok Talk.